This is a pivotal moment for our alliance. In the nearly 70 years of NATO, perhaps never we faced such a range of challenges all at once. In this challenging moment, I want to take this opportunity to state clearly what will never change, and that is the unwavering commitment of the United States to the security and defense of Europe, to our commitment to our common defense. To meet new security challenges, we're adapting using a new playbook, an approach that is both strong and balanced. NATO allies are only growing more united. We've shifted from assurance to deterrence, and so the posture of our force is an important part of this deterrence. The readiness of our land forces is always going to be an essential part of deterrence. It requires capability. It requires to demonstrate the will to use that capability. An important part of that is speed. We've started with recent exercises, working on all the things that we need to do to be able to move quickly, assemble quickly, and deter possible aggression. The number of troops we have in Europe forward station today on a permanent basis is somewhere around 30,000 or so. And that is significantly smaller than we've had in decades past. So the rotational forces play a key role in that. This is an opportunity for the regionally allocated force to work with our multinational allies in a complex environment every day. And we will continue to develop those relationships because the interoperability is key. Army Reserves and National Guard units are the lifeblood of making 30,000 soldiers look like 300,000 soldiers. And they are working and training with our multinational partners and allies here in Europe. And this is the way we're going to fight conflicts in the future. So if we're going to fight this way, we need to train this way. You know, how you build a relationship, it has to be founded on trust. And then we have to have continuity. And so the state partnership program, to me, provides those two things when we're trying to build long-term relationships. So it is really important to work with other nations together, as close as you can and even before an operation starts. We know that we need each other, but we know also that we can rely on each other. We've experienced that in many missions where we have been working and fighting shoulder by shoulder. U.S. Army Europe relies on networks and systems to provide critical services to support command and control capability for our forces and work with our allies. In today's environment, we face an ever-increasing threat to our cybersecurity, which means that we have to work together with our allies and partners to protect and defend our networks across U.S. Army Europe and the Alliance. Dynamic presence here in Usuru is really centered around one key concept. We use every opportunity with our units, partners, and allies, and that's from the very highest strategic problems, such as freedom of movement, all the way down to the training at the very lowest levels. It's hard and it's realistic. It is critically important that our junior leaders be able to work with our allies and our partners to practice their trade, to excel beyond what they consider to be their capabilities because we challenge them at every turn to be leaders. Here in Europe, we get to put a lot of responsibility on very young leaders, very young non-commissioned officers, junior officers that many times are the senior American military person in that allied country or coalition country. So I think U.S. Army Europe is a great leadership laboratory for the forces that are stationed here and it's equally a great leader development opportunity for the forces we rotate in here. Right now we're proving a capability that through our readiness we can work hand in hand with our allies ready to execute an operation. We're an actual representation of the U.S. Army and the guys understand that and we're here and ready to go. Yeah.